uh, very good morning to all of you. Welcome to this uh, plenary session uh, in part with uh, Vorasis and CIA in partnership. Uh, we are uh, having a very interesting panel with us today. And the topic is how, how are we delivering solutions both locally and globally. And I'm happy to introduce uh, Mukundan from MDF Data Chemicals and Suman Sina, who is a Renew Power Chairman and MD. And we'll have Susi K. Ranganathan joining us shortly. We're also delighted that we have Frank here with us. Frank doesn't need any introduction. And I am now uh, going to hand over to Frank to give his uh, welcome remarks before we back to the session. Go ahead, Frank. Many thanks, uh, Dinesh, and everybody. I would like to welcome the members of the Horasis Visions community, especially our members from India. My particular thanks go to the Confederation of Indian Industry, CI. We've been hosting this Horasis India meeting together for the last couple of years. It's the 12th edition of the summit, so a reason to celebrate. It's uh, the first online edition, and uh, of course, we all know why it's online this time. Uh, it's due to COVID, and uh, COVID is impacting um, all of us, ladies and gentlemen, and we are facing the deepest economic recession since the 1920s of the last century. And we need to restructure our economies, and it's not just enough to um, start uh, again to push uh, the restart button, but we really have to reinvent our economies and societies. India, ladies and gentlemen, is playing a very important role in this global economic recovery. And today, during this Horasis India meeting with CI, we are talking about uh, India's role in this global recovery. So please um, enjoy this meeting. I wish you a very fruitful and rewarding meeting. And uh, Dinesh, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Frank. And uh, I think we are, as I said, in the kind of coming out of uh, what I would call as the lockdown in India. And <clears throat> we are going to get a perspective from uh, three of the panelists first, and then we'll have uh, question and answers, which I'll be moderating. I'm the managing director of uh, TVS Supply Chain Solutions, uh, Dinesh. And I would now like to uh, start with um, Mr. C.K. Ranganathan, who is also the uh, deputy chairman of the CIA Southern Region as well. To, he comes with his perspective of uh, the consumer sector. And uh, Sikhar, can I now request you to go ahead, please? Thanks, thanks, Dinesh. Uh, thanks, Frank. Thanks for the opportunity. Good morning, all. Uh, as far as the FMCG sector is concerned, things are uh, limping back to normal, I would say. I think maybe second quarter uh, end, they might, be, they might become more or less on what we used to be in January or maybe in third quarter beginning. So rural economy is showing resilience, is what I can say. And uh, the shutdown of selective areas, the metros and so on, is haunting. I think if the shutdown is lifted, it will come back quickly, is my viewpoint. Uh, I can tell you some sectors are doing well, some sectors are under pressure. As far as the personal care is concerned, shampoos, uh, are doing uh, very well. I think they are on a growth path. Uh, the skin care is uh, down. Generally, skin care is down. Soap is also moderately up. And the kind of uh, anything that is relating to uh, hygiene and cleanliness, they are doing really well. The beauty related one, the lipsticks and anything related to makeup, they are taking a temporary beating. Uh, I'm very confident they will come back. And we are also in another sector, which is salons, which is uh, beautification. And uh, there, I think uh, that it will take some more time to come back. And people are afraid to take uh, beyond haircut. A haircut is a basic necessity they do. But the skin, anything related to skin services, people are not taking. And that, that, that sector is under, undergoing a 60% pressure on top line. I think they're only at 35 to 40% of the current levels. Uh, I'm very confident the self-reliant India, Atmanir Bar Bharat, uh, is going to make the recover economy very fast. As far as our company is concerned, I would like to talk about Kavin Care. We are in multiple sectors like personal care, 
dairy, foods and salons. Um, we are doing much better than pre-COVID in rural. I think that I would say that rural in our investing is really showing resilience. Um, urban, particularly the metros are down. And they are under tremendous pressure. Small towns are reasonably good, but they are yet to catch up with the normal pre-January sales. Uh, top line in April, we did about 60% of what we used to do last year compared to that. May we achieved 70%. And in June, we are hopeful that we will achieve 95% of uh, what we did last year. Uh, but the bottom line is very, very healthy. And I think uh, April was down. May we bet last year. June, I think we are, we are going to comfortably beat. Overall, in, in the first quarter, we may be slightly marginally down compared to last year. But next year, look, both top line and bottom line, very, very promising for us, is what I would say. We will beat both top line and bottom line uh, compared to last year numbers. So, but that, I think salons are struggling, as I was telling. They are only at 35% of what we do. Uh, cold beverages are hit. Cold beverages, which are uh, dependent on impulse purchase, which are dependent on the uh, college and school, and the people need to freely go out and shop, and then the market will pick up. I think we'll, we have to wait for some more time. Otherwise, I think generally the sectors are, we are very hopeful overall as a company. That's with that I will close my remarks. Thank you, Sikhar. Appreciate that. And also, thanks for giving us a positive start, if we can use that word to say it are coming back to normal and you expect that it will continue so and i think now i will move on if i can say so to mukundan who comes from obviously the opposite heavy i mean chemical sector and but he's also from western india so i'm sure you'll also give the western india perspective as well so mukundan now over to you so i think uh, thank you the nation thank you everyone for joining this session and i'm happy to say that uh See, our, our experience has been that uh, there, there one important lesson we've learned in the last few uh, months is that you have to learn on the run. Uh, we have operations in Singapore, we have operations in US, in UK, in Kenya and India, and each country has responded to this pandemic differently. In fact, the first one off the table was Singapore. So whatever we learned in Singapore, we immediately adapted within the company. It was probably the early warning signal which we were getting from Singapore, which really helped this company. Uh, in terms of the uh, 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 approach itself, we, we put the approach as survive, revive, and renew. I think uh, I'm going to steal the name of the company which Sumanth runs, but really it is the survive, revive, and renew. And in the survival phase, we really were focused on employees that no one gets sick, especially the entire rank and file. And also the company had enough cash. And uh, luckily, we, we, we were in a fortunate position of not having any debt in our books in India and uh, having fully loaded up with cash also internationally. Uh, in terms of revival, I think uh, India had the toughest lockdown. I can only tell you this because US, the plant kept running. UK, the plant was running more than 100% capacity. Uh, in India, because we serve varied sectors, like, like agriculture, like industrial sector, some of these sectors never really shut down, but those which were feeding into auto and uh, real estate had much tougher time, uh, and they are slowly opening up. But if you look at the sector like the, uh, consumption products or uh, fast moving consumption product, FMGZ sector or pharmaceutical or agriculture, there the demand has been extremely robust. In fact, our lowest number compared to previous year was about 60%. All our units are already 80% up. So I think we are slowly getting back to normal. Also, we are getting very used to how to manage the entire system without putting anyone at risk in our operations. We're getting a better handle on how to run operations with this pandemic running. I think this is giving us a lot of hope. In terms of revenue, I think we really have now taken several decisions, uh, decision in terms of which are the areas we want to focus on going forward, which were those bad habits we need to shed, how digitized we are, how much R&D focus we need to bring in. So there's a lot of decisions which have been taken in terms of moving forward. Uh, and you will, uh, we, we expect to see that unfold. Also, I would see that we are seeing a huge tailwind coming from international market. Uh, there is a strong order book which is coming from export market, not necessarily because of what we hear that alternate to the current supply chain, uh, supply chains out of China, but it is also because I think many of these countries have realized that they need to have one plus one strategy. They can't rely on just one supplier. We need to have one more supplier in addition to the current supplier. 
So we do hope that if, with our performance, if we can convert these interest into order, the future order book will be very good. So I would say uh, if companies manage to survive, which means conserve cash, make sure that you are in a robust position, and then you revive your operation in a safe way, I think the renew phase is all about rewiring your company, redigitizing it, and then looking at new ways to not just serve local market but also international markets. Thank you, Mukund. Then again, uh, I think it's a positive message you're coming across. I think we do look forward to uh, in interacting with you more uh, later in the session. Can I now request uh, Sumant to give his comments? I mean, coming from the renewable energy sector, what has been your experience and how do you see it going forward? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Dinesh. And thank you, Frank, for hosting this wonderful conference every year. And uh, I think full marks to you. And thank you, uh, I think, from all of our sides for, uh, for this uh, fabulous gathering that you put together. Uh, you know, in terms of um, our sector, we've actually been rather fortunate, if I may say that. Uh, you know, the power sector as a whole, which of course supplies energy to all the other sectors that we just uh, heard from, um, actually during the depths of the lockdown, uh, the part of power demand in India fell by about 25%. And uh, then it picked up in the month of May uh, as the economy started opening up a little bit. It was down about 15%. And in the month of June, so far, power demand is still down about 10%. But you can see that it's gradually edging back to normal. And uh, the expectation is that once all the other industries come online, uh, agricultural demand continues to increase, uh, the chances are that we'll probably come back to fairly close to normal. But obviously, for the year as a whole, we'll probably be below normal, obviously, because uh, we'll have some contraction, because obviously, the three months that we've lost, we've lost. Um, Having said that, you know, the good news for us is that the government made a very specific decision. And that decision was that they decided that this entire cut in the power demand should essentially get service from the conventional side. Basically meaning that all the coal power plants were asked to back down and all the renewable energy plants continue to run. And because power is defined as an essential service, even through the lockdown, we were actually able to continue to operate all of our plants at pretty much full capacity. And so therefore, as far as our sector is concerned, we didn't actually suffer any diminution of revenues at all. We continue to uh, operate and uh, uh, deliver all the power that we are producing. Of course, the conventional uh, power plants did suffer, uh, but to the extent that they actually use uh, coal and they have uh, you know, significant variable costs, those variable costs were obviously not incurred. Uh, and uh, their fixed charges were continued to get paid by the distribution companies. So I think all in all, I would say the power sector has come out reasonably okay from this. Uh, of course, new project construction had to be halted because we could not get people to sites and we couldn't get equipment to sites. And so to that extent, we had to basically uh, stop construction. But I think the government has been quite uh, uh, sensitive to that and they are willing to give us extensions on the projects that, that we're working on. Um, so I think that's not an issue. Uh, in terms of uh, business for the future, uh, you, you, you may be aware, Dinesh, that uh, the Indian government has taken this very strong uh, and positive stand uh, that most of the new power demand should be met through a capacity addition in the area of renewable energy. And um, therefore, even through the lockdown, the government has continued to auction new capacity for renewable energy. And um, in fact, uh, we just won a uh, we just won a tender uh, very recently for a 400 megawatt round the clock power uh, to be fully supplied from renewable energy sources, and the pricing that we that we actually bid on that is significantly less than where uh, coal based power is getting priced right now. And so, even through all of this uh, uncertainty and uh, issues around COVID, our business has actually continued, and not just existing business, but also bidding for new business. Technology reduction, of course, uh, cost reduction continues to happen. Um, and so, therefore, we've continued to bid. Now, this tender that we won is for 400 megawatts of round-the-clock power to be supplied and will actually require an investment of close to six to 7,000 crores, which we'll actually have to make over the next two to three years. Uh, so I think the government also recognizes that this is a sector which has, which has short gestation periods, uh, will require a lot of new investments going forward. And so, therefore, they've continued to keep the, the, you know, the momentum going in our sector at least. So, in that sense, you know, power being an essential uh, necessity, uh, you know, uh, obviously, therefore, has not suffered as much. Uh, and then within that, 
I think the government has taken a very specific decision to reorient more towards uh, the, uh, the renewable energy side than to the conventional side. So in that sense, we've actually been doing reasonably okay. Uh, I, I think globally also you see the same thing happening. Uh, you see, you know, last year, just to give you a very quick stat, uh, about 40,000 megawatts of new capacity was added globally, out of which 180,000 came from wind and solar, and only 30,000 came from coal. So the whole world is actually shifting towards renewables. And you've seen all the stimulus programs that the EU has come out with and so on. A lot of focus is really being given to making sure that the recovery that we come out of uh, in this method is going to be a green recovery. And there is a much stronger focus on uh, you know, energy production from clean sources and uh, energy efficiency and, um, and so on. So I think that's, that's in some ways going to be a positive from this, that all the stimulus dollars that do go in, perhaps with the exception of the U.S., uh, are likely to be green, uh, greener. And so, of course, you know, as we come out of this, hopefully we have a slightly more sustainable global economy. Thank you, Suman. And if I can, just before getting to questions, if I can add, having coming from the supply chain sector, having an overview of uh, most of what's happening, at least as far as India is concerned, I would say we are closer to about 60-70% across all sectors. Of course, some are 90, some are, you know, year 40, depending on which sector you're looking at. And we also find, I think, definitely more positive sentiment coming as we uh, as in the last two weeks. So we do believe that I think it's uh, the right time for us to have the positive outlook and look at growth and look at, uh, you know, coming back out of the, the COVID situation. But having said that, uh, you know, uh, CKR, I think you did mention that uh, you do see a lot of growth happening in terms of the FMCG sector. But can you tell me what kind of innovations are you seeing and what have you done in terms of making a change in terms of uh, this, this sector and what you are doing? Thanks, Dinesh. Uh, currently, I think anything you do, if it is not topical, it's not going to do well. Uh, topical means it is uh, relating to health and uh, hygiene. So hygiene and cleanliness sectors are doing well. Uh, health and particularly the kind of immunity boosting uh, sectors are doing very well. If consumer thinks this will go, if it's going to help uh, my immunity get boosted, they are ready to pick up. And that's the current trend. And uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, I think I see quite a lot of innovations in this sector. And one of the good things that uh, I would say that this is the time that our team members have come tremendous uh, kind of this thing, uh, efforts they have put in to launch products at a, at a breakneck speed and which we have never seen in our company. That's the kind of things. And we could able to launch uh, so far about uh, five products and uh, you know, in the next 15 days time, another two more products will get rolled out. And that uh, takes the count to seven. And we have launched in the, uh, for example, some of the uh, innovations we've done is uh, sanitizers we have done which any everybody has. Uh, but I think we have come out with a gadget sanitizer, which is nobody has, uh, which specifically has 99.7 percent alcohol because gadgets are very, very sensitive to water. So you need to have very, very less water when you construct the whole thing. I think that way, I think we have very, very carefully chosen. And uh, also, if you look at, we have also come out with uh, uh, fruits and vegetable wash, meat wash, and these are specifically made products. Uh, which are very unique and which are made of full of uh, food products based on the food ingredients based uh, thing. That I think is very differentiated compared to market players is what I would say. So this helps us to be clearly as a full owner in these segments wherever we have launched unique products. Wherever we have launched Me Too products, you have to go and fight along with them in terms of uh, this thing. Fortunately, currently the supply demand, the demand is far outstripping to supplies. Therefore, everybody is able to sell. I think probably in a month or two, when the supplies are far in excess of demand, the brands will count and the kind of offering will count. So we are hopeful that we have definitely uh, quite a lot of things up for you. The two more products which we are going to launch, which I don't want to disclose now, but they are very unique. So out of three are um, me too, like we need to be there in the category, but four are unique products is how I would. Interesting. So this is the time for innovation, according to you. And Mukundan, actually, there are two questions uh, actually being asked by uh, viewers. 
So one is in terms of, uh, you know, how, how do you see the recovery? Do you think this recovery is going to be a V-shaped one, meaning we are going to continuously have growth or do you see a little bit of stutter on the way? Second, I mean, this is, I think, a specific question for you. I mean, do you look at Africa as being one of the big markets where you're looking at expanding your production? Well, I think let me answer the second one first. I think Africa, uh, certainly we look at as a market of opportunity. I've actually put my video streaming on uh, hold because of bandwidth, I think. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we do look at Africa as a, as an opportunity. Uh, the, the challenges in Africa are regulatory stability. I think the same thing we speak about in India is the true in Africa too. As long as governments uh, have regulatory stability, we would be very keen to invest. The second big challenge in Africa is exactly the challenge in India. Africa is... Uh, actually multiple countries with logistical problem. I think, Dinesh, you are in that business. You would know the kind of uh, uh, logistical issues which we face in Africa. Provided these two are sorted out, I think Africa holds a terrific potential to uh, grow forward. Off late, you've seen there is a tremendous regulatory stability in Africa. The governments have become more proactive and are taking the right decisions. Hopefully, coming out of the pandemic, uh, if uh, they move in the right direction, with uh, digitized new methods of working, I think Africa holds a terrific potential. As far as the recovery is concerned, I don't think it will be V, it will be U or W. Every sector is going to show a different shape. So you have to look at your sector. I, You know, it, there's, a, there's a tendency amongst all of us to put the economy in one basket and say, what is the shape? There are sectors which never went down. For example, food sector and pharmaceutical sector demand actually went up. There was no slowdown. Agriculture, for example, has more or less remained flat, growing at a steady pace. Uh, for, for example, the other, other sectors which would sort of come back faster are the ones which are non-discretionary in nature. The moment it is discretionary, the moment the ticket sizes are large, people are going to come back much slowly. But I'm very hopeful that this time, if we get some kind of uh, what I would call a uh, two-pronged attack on this head, pandemic. The first one is, if we find a cure which, is, which helps us to manage the disease well, I think people will at least start taking a bit of risk. And the second issue is that the moment we get vaccine, I think we will clearly see the world coming out of this whole... Uh, so we are about 12 to 18 months away from normalcy, but we will not return to normal in many ways because people have actually tasted certain kind of changes which will remain permanent. For example, work from home is going to become a norm. Uh, you are going to employ more women now because uh, we never thought about women in employment uh, because uh, they had problems of coming into office. Now we know that they can work from home. Another 50% of our workforce becomes uh, available and accessible to all of us. You can now get experts from around the world uh, on a video streaming to help and uh, run the operations. We have actually remotely started our plants today with our head of the operations sitting in Bombay, instructing somebody in Kadalo to restart the plant. On a uh, phone, we never done. We have never done these sort of things before. So I think the world is going to be in a different place, and I really think uh, we, we will come out of this pandemic uh, stronger, better, but in a shape which will be very unique to the sector you are in. Thank you, Mukundan. I think uh, you have made a very interesting point in terms of how we should look at from the new normal. But uh, Sumant, I think the question I had for you was, I think one of the feedback at least I've been getting when we speak with the small and medium scale enterprises uh, in the different sectors is that the ability of them to take risk is limited because they have access to funds, etc. I know you're somebody who has taken big risk in terms of coming into the renewable sector and doing very well here. But how do you see this? Do you think private sector will invest for the future? Or do you think all of us will be pulling back saying that, you know, we let us wait for things to improve and therefore we are actually causing more pain because we are not investing. So how do you see that? Yeah, it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation, isn't it? Um, look, I, I think that, um, uh, you know, a lot in the in the near future, a lot will really depend on how this whole pandemic plays out. If in the next uh, few months time, the number of cases in India can continues to go up dramatically or the rate of fatalities increases or we all start reading articles in the papers about how hospitals are overflowing and so on. That's naturally going to make people more cautious. It's going to make people cautious about going out of their homes, um, going into shopping, you know, purchasing things. So, uh, so in that case, I think it will become a little bit harder. If on the other hand, as Mukundan was saying, if a cure is found or a vaccine is found, let's say two, three months down the road, then you, you could almost have a relief uh, 
you know, uh, situation where people just come out and, you know, start going out and about and all the pent up demand starts coming out. Um, in which case, I think you'll see a faster pickup. So I think a lot depends upon how the pandemic plays out. And I think that is something that nobody at this point really has a good answer for. So therefore, most people who are prudent will take the view of being a little bit more cautious than being aggressive at this point in time. And therefore, people are going to say, you know what, let's just be a little bit uh, careful about how we manage our cash, how we uh, plan for new growth opportunities at this point in time. And that is therefore obviously going to result in some degree of holding back on expenditure and picking up of the economy more slowly than more rapidly. Uh, so that's the way I see things playing out. Uh, I think also keep in mind that in any case, the Indian economy was slowing down before the pandemic actually even hit. Uh, we were already, if you look at the last quarter of the last financial year, we were already looking at about three odd percent of GDP growth and four percent for the full year. Um, so, so we were already not in a great position. So, to, to your point about when will uh, when will people start spending and what does that mean for small and medium sized companies? I think it's still it's still going to be difficult. I don't see us. Uh, immediately coming out of this whole uh, situation. And I think uh, the whole financial sector and how bank street you know, deal with all the loans and so on, I think that will have a big impact as well on the long-term health and sustainability of the MSMEs and the uh, small um, size companies. Um, I, I think at this point, I would be cautious. I would say conserve cash to the extent you can, um, hold off uh, you know, on making large size decisions and just protect yourself for the future. It's only once I think we have clarity that things are now reversing and we're getting back to normal. I think only that's the time when you can start expecting the economy really to start picking up. I think until then, you just have to be very cautious. Thanks. And uh, I mean, um, Frank, I hope we can go ahead with one more round of questions. So I think, uh, can I ask you, I mean, I'm hearing two questions from uh, the audience also. One, do you expect work from home to mean that you are going to have excess office capacity? I know the answer because I heard you publicly. But then in terms of the second point also, would you be looking at Africa as a sec- I mean, Africa also for uh, healthcare products and healthcare as a sector? Um, Africa, we, we, we will not be investing at this juncture, but we rather we will export to our distributors there. And that way we'll, we'll invest that way, not putting our own factories there. I don't think we intend to do it at this juncture. Uh, but opportunity was great, and we are doing it through our multiple agents in different con- countries in Africa. We're coming back to the next question of work from home. Uh, I would say that uh, COVID uh, has taught, otherwise, we would have never imagined we can work together because suddenly everybody knows the option has to work from home. I think that has created a clear comfort zone. The, and that's what I'm telling. The kind of uh, new products we are able to launch, the kind of new ideas we are able to come, come up with online, that is definitely no, no way inferior to offline thing. In, in a way, it is like edge is much more. Even when you want to get into a meeting, you can get in in just three to five seconds. In a, otherwise, in a corporate room, you are running short of uh, meeting rooms. You have to look at such kind of things. Wait for some meeting is not get over. People wait and waste time. Wastage of time is not high. It is very, very low. No wastage here. The productivity is higher. I can only say that all round plus points uh, in work from home and primarily employee safety. If you look at. That's a very, very important thing. At this juncture, bringing them to office, you are risking the lives of employees. I think it's a very, very thing. That's how we started. And now I think having gone to that, that, that is one we ensure. And the future is going to be very, very comfortable for us. The cost is down. The cost is down. The recruit is up. Why would you not do that? When we can go and recruit anywhere in India. You don't need to kind of this thing. And uh, we, the economic discussion, it's not just an idea. It will be across. So that, that and also no pollution because of people have to travel to this thing. So a lot of plus points is what I can see for work from office. Therefore, we add back these money. We put it back in the form of investment in advertisement, create more uh, brand growth, new products. All these things are plus point. Thank you. Thank you, Sikhar. So I'm just going to get, uh, have one last set of questions to both of you. Same question, and uh, you know, if both of you can answer, uh, give a quick answer. So I think one of the key things which we are hearing is, you know, smaller sector or uh, medium and small scale sector suffering from lack of funding, etc. How do you think large corporates can actually help the banks fund them and support them? 
Mukunda and Sumant. So, if um, you want me to go first, I think uh, we have done this. What we've done is we've taken all our critical small scale vendors and medium scale vendors and made sure that our payments were on time. And we actually monitor this now more carefully than before. And uh, those who need additional fund, uh, which is in advance, we are also making those arrangements. We've also lined up with banks in terms of extending credit to them. I think with a large company coming and backing, I think some of the banks are willing to extend credit. Right, right now, it is not a question of interest rate. Right now, it's a question of access to credit. And I think very clearly, also we are advising the SMEs to be very careful with their cash. Also, to whom they supply. Because we also have done this exercise of, are our customers credit worthy? So we also are telling our SMEs, be careful to whom you sell. Make sure those companies are credit worthy to pay you the money. Because tomorrow, you don't want working capital problem with our vendor base. So that's really what we've done with our extended vendor base and uh, extended partnership. And uh, for us, it's very clear. We have to survive. The ecosystem has to survive. So we are very much focused on ecosystem survival, ecosystem revival. And we will also renew the ecosystem jointly. So we cannot make out of this pandemic alone. We have to make out, make out of this pandemic together. Thanks. Uh, Sumant? Yeah, look, I think the points Mubrungan said are absolutely valid. Uh, I, I think as large corporates, we have a responsibility to make sure that our payments go out on time. Of course, to the extent that we uh, we are in a okay cash flow position ourselves, uh, but we must definitely not withhold any payments just to keep our position stronger. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, MSMEs and SMEs also uh, you know get cash uh, and payments and so on from us. And the second thing is the government has announced some pretty uh, good programs as far as lending to MSMEs is concerned. I think those pro programs really need to be fast forwarded as best as possible. I know that um, some very little amount of money so far has been dispersed under those programs. So those really need to be speeded up and moved forward because ultimately we need the MSMEs to survive. They are the primary job creators in the country. And if those guys don't survive, at some point, it's going to start impacting large corporates as well because they are supplying essential components and equipment to all of us. So we do need that sector to continue to be robust. Thank you, Suman. I think if I can say so, I, I see a lot of questions on what is you know going to happen to travel, etc. I think I'll just give my view and then close. I think my belief is that while all of us are going to get used to working virtually, let us not forget that uh, we are going to be interacting personally as well. So I think we have to get over this fear, get over the immediate issues which all of us have. And then I'm sure we will find that uh, we are back to what we would call as a new normal, which doesn't mean that you're always going to be working from home, always that you're not going to meet people, but looking forward to that day soon. And as everybody said, I think finding the real success. I think, Frank, thank you for really inviting us and putting together this session. I think it's been a wonderful experience. As you can see from the various comments coming uh, on the screen, you will actually realize how many people are actually clued in, enjoying. So thank you for really inviting us and making this happen and all the best for the ongoing events for the future. Thank you, everyone, for having joined the meeting, CKR, Mukundan, and uh, Suman. And most importantly, uh, you, the viewers, I hope you found this a useful session. Thank you and uh, all the best for the rest of the uh, events. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. It was a wonderful session. We see really light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, as we said, innovation is uh, what we have to go for and um, the green revolution and the, the green innovation. So I think a great start to this uh, summit today. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.